Three Lives Three Worlds The Pillow Book Lower Volume Original Work by Tanki Gongzi English Translation, Hamster 428 English Editing, Rock Harlequin, Lily, Joanna Kuang Part 4 The Shadow's Souls Chapter 13 Feng Chu had a dream that night. In her dream, thick clouds were obscuring the sky as wind rushed over the open field. There was widespread fire, and dark smoke diffused in the air. A melancholic river snaked across the field, on its banks stood a flickering shadow. Feng Chu could tell the person standing by the riverside was dressed entirely in red. Despite not seeing her appearance very well, she knew it was Arania. With many questions running through her mind, she stepped on the dead grass, wanting to come closer. But for some reason, she could not near her. When she saw the red shadow plunging into the thick smoke, she hastily called out, Why do you want to kill yourself? What had happened that you must die even at the risk of disintegrating your soul? The woman's laughter drifted to her with the wind. With the same nonchalance Sumoy had mentioned, she said, Yes, why indeed? The wildfire suddenly expanded and jumped to Feng Ju's feet like a beast. Startled, she flew into the air. Her body became airy and then she woke up. In the morning, Feng Ju wondered if this was perhaps a prophetic dream, but she couldn't figure out what it was foreshadowing. Cha Cha, who returned with Mo Xiao yesterday, was now lifting her skirt as she ran in to remind her that Mo Xiao would be returning to the Holy Palace. Last night when she cleaned the study, she saw a bag of toffee foxes with a note that said it was for Mo Xiao. She asked whether Feng Ju still intended to give it to him. Feng Ju tapped her forehead. Luckily, Cha Cha was there to remind her. She went to the study to look for the toffee foxes, then excitedly went to see Mo Xiao. After a good night's sleep, Su Moi finally looked like a human today, almost fully returning to his former dashing form. Feng Ju chivalrously threw the toffee bag in front of him. Su Moi choked on his tea. I also have a share. Of course. Feng Ju generously said, even my sweeping servant has his share. It make no sense not to leave you some. And then she told him as if she was taking credit, naturally, your share is bigger than theirs. I also added more powdered sugar onto yours. The ones I gave to Chen Ye are also like yours. I heard Chen Ye gave them to his young attendants and they all think they taste quite good. Su Moi's expression kept on changing and finally settled on one that was both pitying and helpless. He received the toffee and said to Feng Ju, Have you mentioned this to Zai's? Do I need to tell him this? Feng Ju asked quizzically. Mo Xiao's face became even more pitying and helpless. ERM best not to tell him. Remember not to say anything later on either. That will be better for you. He had thoroughly confused her. Why not? Because I want to live another two years, Mo Xiao thought to himself. But he only said to her with some discretion, Oh, because with your current identity, it's not very proper to personally make candies and gift them to your servants and master. In the past, Arania didn't do such things either. If you tell Zeiss, you'll only attract his suspicion and complicate things. I see, Feng Ju suddenly came to realization. I hadn't given this matter careful thought. It's still you who considers things thoroughly. At this point, because Zeiss had been mentioned several times, 
Fengju suddenly recalled something else. She said to Su Moi, I suddenly thought of something. There's one thing I have to ask you. Because I'm a terrestrial animal, I'm not very familiar with sea life. But since you're from the sea, you'd probably know this. What are the antidotes for the venom from a water serpent's blood? It had been more than ten days since the water serpent's venom seeped into Zai's body, but it was yet to be purified. The Bionyao apothecaries were just earth fairies after all. They had no knowledge on this and couldn't actually diagnose this poison. Although it wasn't a very serious poison according to Zai's, Fengju was a bit concerned. Su Moi was confused. A water serpent's blood? A water serpent's blood isn't venomous. In fact, its blood is an extremely rare tonic. Regular poisons would be cured once they come into contact with a water serpent's blood. For certain poisons that are too strong due to being made with several different types of poisons, Apothecaries would typically use a water serpent's blood as a primer to first cure what can be cured, afterward, drawing out the rest of the poison is much easier. Who told you a water serpent's blood is venomous? Fengju looked at Su Moi in stuttering bafflement. But, but he said he was poisoned by the water serpent's blood. That he acted that way be, because of the poison and that it was beyond his control. Su Moi poured himself a cup of tea, raised an eyebrow and said, Whoever said this must have lied to you. The teacup had only touched lips when he suddenly paused and turned around to look in her. You said he acted that way. What kind of acting that way are you talking about? Feng Ju said nothing. Su so Moi tentatively asked her, he didn't take advantage of you, did he? Feng Ju's face went white and then turned pink. Her blush deepened by the second and had now turned red. Su so Moi's lips twitched. He could already guess who this was. Dai Jun. He had really drunk bloody mold today. Rather, he had been drinking bloody mold ever since he accepted Lian Song's entrustment and encountered Dai Jun in this place. Dai Jun's courtship was just too ingenious that one should forgive him for not really picking up on it. Nonetheless, he knew very well what the consequences would be if His Majesty knew he had spoiled his plans. Feng Ju sat on a pear wood chair against the sunlight looking lost. He wasn't sure what she was thinking. Su so Moi coughed, trying to remedy the situation against his conscience. Truthfully, even though a water serpent's blood is an antidote to many poisons, love poison isn't one of them. If love poison has contaminated the water serpent's blood, Feng Ju propped her chin on her hand. Her blush had diffused a bit. Are you saying that the water serpent may have been poisoned with love poison and then it in turn contaminated others? But if in the case I got love poisoned, you then touched my blood, would you also contract the poison? Where in the world does such a love poison exist? M.O. Xiao, you don't really think I'm that gullible, do you? Su Moi gave a hollow laugh. He could almost see Dai Jun placing the Kang He sword on his neck. At length, he sighed and said to Feng Chu, You've told me that you want to meet a better person, someone who'll save you when you're in danger, someone who won't toss you aside after he saves you, someone who'll comfort you when you're in pain. Have you ever thought that maybe the one who deceives you is the person you've been looking for? Feng Ju was stunned for a moment. It's true that I'm happy when I'm with him, but... Truth is, I could guess who that person is. Don't you think there are times when his interests and personality resemble Dong Hua Dai Jun's? 
Not waiting for Feng Ju's answer, he went on, I think it's not that you don't like him, you just feel that you're turning him into Dong Hua Dai Jun's shadow. There have been so many times when you say you would let go, but in the end you still can't. That's what you think, isn't it? In fact, Su Moi's speech was mostly hogwash. Even when he knew what he made up was ridiculous, he still tried to lead her toward this crooked rationalization. If she could think his words over once, she would definitely think them over twice. Once she thought about them a few times, she might even believe that she actually liked Zai's. At this point, this was the only way he could help Dai Jun remedy the situation. Feng Ju fell silent for a moment. In that moment, Su Moi drank several cups of tea. He believed that Feng Ju was being quiet in order to gather her energy in preparation to chew him out. He brought it upon himself anyway. He awaited her tirade. At length, Feng Ju finally spoke in a low voice, Hmm, maybe you're right. Su Moi's half-full teacup spilled down his collar as he looked at Feng Ju in surprise. Feng Ju again fell silent for a moment before she said to him, Everything you said today is good advice that has me sober up. Do you still have something else to advise me? A surreal feeling suddenly enveloped Su Moi, but his voice remained calm, Oh, nothing. Only this, if you really like him, don't pressure yourself. It might just be because that's the type of man you like, and it just so happens Dai Jun and he are both that type. After Mo Xiao left, Feng Ju sat in his room for a long while. In the short time she was talking to Mo Xiao just now, she was in shock, anger, confusion, and then comprehension. Four different moods all of a sudden circled her until her brain was dizzy. She tried to think but she just couldn't. She was shocked that Zai's deceived her, she was angry that Zai's actually deceived her, she was confused as to why Zai's deceived her, and she realized he might have deceived her because he liked her. When she suddenly realized this, she couldn't help but become startled at first. However, when her aunt Bai Qian taught her divination in the past, there was a good saying that those who did not have this talent must command a guessing technique if they wanted to pass the class. She must first exclude all known possibilities. The last remaining possibility, even if it seemed impossible, was also the most likely. This was the secret to success in divination. Although Zai's had denied whether he liked her or not, Feng Ju could also be considered an experienced person in love. Her view was naturally no longer ignorant. She knew that once someone loved, he could sacrifice everything like her uncle-in-law Yehua. He could also dare to do everything like her friend Xiao Yan. Or he could stubbornly deny everything, which, she feared, was precisely Zai's type. She didn't understand at first what her feelings for Zai's were. Among all of her friends, Zai's was undoubtedly the most knowledgeable and the most tasteful. It was only natural she had a favorable impression of Zai's. Otherwise, he'd unlikely be able to take advantage of her even in the name of serpent poisoning. In the past, when Grey Wolf Diddy carelessly hit her face and left teeth marks on her cheek during one of their games, she had given him a beating so brutal he was afraid to speak to her for three months. But if she were to say she liked Zai's, then why was she so terrified when she thought Zai's liked her? She couldn't find an answer until Su Moi's words floated into her ears today. As though a hole had been drilled in her head, a light permeated into her mind. Though painful, it gave her clarity. 
Mo Shao was indeed Mo Shao. His once sentence whisked into her mind like a breeze and dispersed what little fog that was still left. Yes, Zai's felt familiar, because he was the same type as Dong Hua Dai Jun. However, her affection for Zai's did not stem from Dong Hua Dai Jun, but rather because he was the type that she liked. And it just so happened they were both that type. Mo Xiao's words made complete sense. Zai's was the man she was looking for. Now she ruminated, what debt was she still carrying? Ye King Ti's was the most important. After parting ways with Zai's when the duel with Serpent ended in Shuiyu's swamp, she discovered a pouch with the Saha fruit in her sleeve. This was when she realized that this shell was her original body. With the Saha fruit hidden safely, she could use it to revive Ye King Ti after she got out of Fanyan Valley. At that time, the debt she owed him could be paid off, and her promise to mourn for him could also be erased. And then, the name Dong Hua floated in her mind. She froze for a moment. Dai Jun had really given her a lot of grace. Of course, he had also made her suffer many hardships. But he and Jai Hun were now a couple. Dai Jun no longer had anything to do with her. In a few years, if he remembered her, she would only likely be an amusing little friend in his impression. After thinking through everything, she realized she no longer carried any debt of gratitude. That being so, since heaven had sent her someone from above, why not quickly hold on to him? This guy's eyes was nothing more than a dead duck with a stubborn bill. She had even given the difficult Dong Hua Dai Jun a try, how much more difficult could Zai's be? Thinking so, she calmly drank a cup of tea, suddenly feeling quite confident. Three days later, Junyo left the imperial city. Her pregnancy was affected on the day she received her sentence on Lingxia Terrace. By Lady King Hua's various pleadings, Shang Jun finally relented and allowed her to remain in the capital long enough to recuperate. Feng Zhu heard from Mo Xiao that Aranya did them a favor that year by letting Junyo and Chen Ye meet one last time. Therefore, she had arranged everything with the sentence administrator some days ago to put on a goodbye show by the river outside the city for the two of them. He said Arania didn't actually come along that year, but having nothing else to do, she felt that there shouldn't be any problem if she were to take a little look. The setting sun's afterglow shone on the water. Weeping willows lined the river bank. But those touching scenes often depicted in the Bayaniao travel journals involving goodbye gifts and tears totally did not happen. Junyo stood under a willow tree, her body now thin as a twig. Chen Ye stood tall, gazing across the river. The bearded administrator stood a few paces behind them, his eyes burning like a pair of bright torches. A long time passed by in silence. There were actually people in this world who were so dense. Would anyone who got stared at by outsiders be able to express his deepest feelings? She sighed, and then called the bearded administrator to come over and help her try some tea. During the time she spent with Zai's in the past, she had learned the pleasure of enjoying tea in the wilderness. She thus took this opportunity to bring along a tea set for some practice. Sure enough, just as the bearded administrator lifted his feet, behind them, Junyo made some movement. Her voice was very soft. Unfortunately, the whispering came to Feng Ju's foxy ears from the wind very clearly. What she said was full of repentance, I can only forsake your affection in this life of ours. I was too naive, and now I do not deserve you anymore. I only hope. 
I only hope we can renew our promise in our next life. If there is another lifetime, let's never forsake one another. Feng Ju's arms instantly raised in goosebumps, the teacup in her hand slightly shook. She perked her ears wanting to hear Chen Yi's response, but she had been perking for quite a while yet there was no response from Chen yet. At length, he answered her, seemingly puzzled. What affection have I for you? There was a trace of unsteadiness in Junyo's voice, you, you said that I was the Mimi you grew up with. That even if I've done wrong, you would not abandon me. You're normally not a meddlesome person. Yet knowing that rescuing me would bring terrible consequences, you still put your life at risk. If these things aren't because of your feelings for me. Chen Ye lightly said, I save you so that your father's blood can be retained. I wouldn't be a man if I did not repay my debt of gratitude. You should thank your father for his kindness toward me. Then why have you come to bid me farewell today? asked Junyo incredulously. Isn't it because you can't bear to abandon me? I just wanted to take the opportunity of coming outside for a walk. Junyo's voice trembled, you've never liked Changdi and Aranya, but you've always treated me the best. Chen Ye suddenly said with some contempt, that's because of your mother's unchaste and inauspicious blood. I should have known that since you and Changdi were born from the same womb, there was no difference. And yet I had thought better of you. Junyo shook with rage, her voice tearful, if I am of unchaste and inauspicious blood, then what about Arania? She is also born from the same mother. She's already married to someone else yet she still tries to flirt with you. Isn't she even more unchaste and inauspicious? Isn't she the one who's willing to corrupt herself? Yet you are willing to be imprisoned by her. Chen Ye sneered, you're perfectly right that I'm willing to be imprisoned by her. What of it? Feng Ju's pointy ears abruptly shook, her hand dropping to the ground. The administrator concernedly came up to her and asked, Do you have a toothache, your highness? Feng Ju shook her head and gave him a cup of tea, then pointed to the riverside, meaning to tell him that he could start departing when he's finished with his tea. She came to catch a show today, and so she did. She really didn't expect Chen Yi's reason for rescuing Junyo to be this untold lair. But this was also quite in line with his temper. Chen Ye was verily not the kind of person who pities women. She knew well enough that he could hurt someone by just opening his mouth. Now looking to the distance to see Junyo trembling like a leaf in the wind, her heart was filled with sympathy. Junyo went away in abjection. Chen Ye gazed to the riverside scenery. Outside the city were tall mountains and running streams. Compared to the small landscape in the estate, it was naturally more open here. Chen Ye had just argued with Junyo. Perhaps he would be thirsty. Feng Ju wondered whether she should invite him over for a cup of tea to clear his throat or not. She had only called out when she instantly felt some regret. With Chen Yi's contempt for Arania, he probably wouldn't come, she had called him over for nothing. Thinking so, she suddenly felt pointless and awkward. She prepared to pour the leftover tea and gather her tea set to go. Unexpectedly, Chen Ye actually came over. Not only did he come over, he also sat cross-legged. Not only did he sit down, he sat opposite her. He looked up and asked, Where's the tea you were talking about? This scene in the play. Feng Ju quickly got into her role and answered, Right here, right here, 
as she handed him a small cup she had just filled. To act realistically, to portray Arania's feelings for Chen Ye, Feng Ju must raise a few words of concern. At the moment his lips touched the rim of the cup, she worriedly told him, I've just brewed the tea so it's still a bit hot. Give it a blow first. And when he drank the liquid down, she said expectantly, there's nothing special about this tea. It's only brewed with some coarse leaves. But the water was collected from the dew on lotus leaves. Give it a try and see whether it's to your taste. Chen Ye placed the cup down and looked at her with penetrating eyes. She calmly handed a silk kerchief to him and continued her caring act that was full of indulgence. You must have been absent-minded just now. Look, your mouth is stained with tea. Use this. Chen Ye watched her for a moment before receiving her handkerchief. There was a mocking hint in his words, I don't understand you. A few days ago, I heard your and Lord Zai's affection for each other had made. You the model couple among the aristocrats. Yet why is it that you're showing so much care for me today? Feng Ju's heart gave a thump. Zai's never left Kinan Mountain in Arania's time. He had played no part in Arania and Chen Yi's story. But she had forgotten that Zai's was now one of many variables. Mo Shao had warned her that she could do whatever it was she wanted, but she must be sure to play along according to the past when it came to the relationship between Arania and Chen Ye, for this was a crucial component of the future outcomes. Feng Ju held Chen Yi's hand and sincerely said, Zai's and I are merely playing with each other. But my feelings for you, she was about to blurt out have always been genuine when she quickly bit her tongue as she suddenly remembered Arania only had a secret crush on Chen yet at the time. At this very moment, it just so happened Cha Cha had brought Zai's, who came back from Kinan out of the blue, to the riverside looking for Feng Ju. What the two encountered was precisely this scene. Weeping willows were swaying on the banks, river breeze softly grazed the water surface. In the grass field sat a tea table. There, Chen Ye and Feng Ju were sitting opposite each other. Feng Ju had Chen Ye's hand in hers from across the tea table. She was softly whispering something to him. In her eyes was infinite tenderness. Cha Cha's mind was completely muddled. She began trailing behind Zai's when she saw him take a few steps closer. She heard her own princess's voice floating into her ears, Zai's is a good man. Perhaps playing with each other isn't a very accurate description. However, what you say really worries me. He and I are only friends who help each other out from time to time. I vow to heaven I have absolutely nothing to do with him. Not before, not now, and not ever. Will you believe me? Cha Cha did not have time to ponder over Feng Ju's words, but she did melt at her soft voice. She accidentally gave a sneeze. In that moment when her head tilted to the side, she saw Zai's slightly stunned expression. His lordship's face was white like snow, his eyes cold like frozen ice. Cha Cha gingerly turned around. She saw the couple sitting by the tea table also watching them. One was indifferent while the other was quite surprised. She thought perhaps they were alarmed by her sneeze and only discovered them now. Cha Cha glanced over to see that Her Highness's hand was still covering Chen Yi's. Although there was some surprise in her eyes, she had yet to withdraw the tenderness in them. Moreover, the princess was dressed entirely in red today. Sitting alongside Chen Ye who was dressed entirely in white, they looked just like a match made in heaven. 
Zai's eyes paused on them for a moment. She had never seen that kind of expression on his face before, but in the end what kind of expression it was, she could not say. His lordship took a step forward, then stopped, then looked at the couple that was sitting in stillness for a moment, spoke not, and finally turned to leave. She remembered that his lordship's back had always been dignified. No matter what crisis there was, his pace had always been unhurried. It had had its own kind of grace. For some reason, his footsteps were now little urgent. Cha Cha stood still in place, knowing she shouldn't follow him this time. She heard Chen Ye meaningfully say to her master, If there's nothing between you two, why is he leaving? She heard her master answered earnestly but equally vaguely, Oh, there's really nothing between Zai's and I. You needn't test me. Perhaps he left because he felt he had disturbed our enjoyment of tea and scenery. Or do you think having more people would liven the mood? If you prefer something livelier, I can call him to come back. Cha Cha saw his lordship's back slightly pause and felt in that moment he was going to erupt. But in just a flash, he had disappeared from their sight. Cha Cha recalled the image of his lordship's back and thought to herself his lordship was indeed his lordship. He had even made the landscape one of jade tree in the wind. However, the wind may have been a bit strong, making that jade tree in the wind seem a little desolate. Cha Cha suddenly felt a wave of sympathy washing over her. Feng Ju looked to the pouring downfall outside her window in a daze. After they left the field in the afternoon, she was proud of herself for watching Zai's walk away while still reassuring and accompanying Chen Ye through tea before walking him back to Mengchun Manor. This was her professionalism. She was caught in a scenario no different from an amorous guest who visited the brothel to find his sweetie only to run into his shrew of a wife who came to catch the affair. She believed that a habitual offender still couldn't have taken care of things better than she did. On the one hand, she felt it wasn't very easy to be a player. On the other hand, she felt she had done such a great job that she must be naturally gifted. After Chen Ye returned to Mengchun Manor, she spent an entire afternoon searching for Zai's. By the time rain drizzled down, she still couldn't find a trace of his shadow. She turned around and went back. If she had to guess, she'd say Zai's was jealous. But he had always been a sensible man, she didn't need to explain herself to him right away. Dealing with Chen Ye was a very tiring thing, she had better save some of her energy. It wouldn't be good to get sick in the rain. Cha Cha rested the candlestick on the windowsill and looked to the pouring night sky. She worriedly looked to Feng Ju and said, It's raining so hard, his lordship must be drenched. Feng Ju yawned. He should be able to find a shelter. It's nothing to worry about. If you haven't been able to find him, sighed her maid, it must mean he's purposely avoiding you. I'm sure he wants to see you but is afraid of it at the same time. He wants you to explain to him that there's nothing between you and His Excellency Chen yet, but he's afraid that you'd say there are actually feelings between you two. He's not that complicated of a person. Feng Ju replied. Cha Cha sighed, just think, his lordship has gone to some deserted place and at the moment, it's raining cats and dogs. But his lordship's heart is already overwhelmed with shock and sadness, how can he pay any attention to the rain? Even if the icy rain seeps through his clothes, that coldness is nothing compared to the despair in his heart. He can't possibly. Cha Cha looked at Feng Ju with some resentment. 
by the time he realizes it's raining, I'm sure he'll hope that your highness would still come despite the rain. He'll hold you in his arms and forget all about the injury you've inflicted on him. But you, she gave Feng Zhu another resentful look. You went home the moment you saw a few drops of rain. Is there even a place for his lordship in your heart? What pain he must be feeling. He'll wonder why he can't just die from the rain. Feng Zhu's head couldn't dodge the onslaught hurled at her. It can't be that bad. Cha Cha struck the iron while it was hot. Your Highness, do you want to go look for his lordship again? Feng Zhu struggled to imagine an injured size in the rain. She didn't know why, but she kept picturing his sitting around enjoying the rain by a simmering hot pot. How could standing miserably in the rain be something Zai's would do? She lamented Cha Cha had worried too much and gave a cough, I'm going to bed. Zai's must have gone to bed himself. I'll look for him tomorrow after the sky clears up. Cha Cha had wasted her breath trying to turn iron into steel. She sighed, shook her head, and turned to make Feng Zhu's bed. Outside the window, rain pounded on. Feng Zhu foggily thought to herself that it had been so sunny for the past few days. The rain came just in time. To wash the haziness away. She gradually fell asleep in the pattering of the rain. In the middle of the night, she felt that her bed had gotten narrower. There was a dampness passing over her face. She didn't sleep very soundly tonight, and so it only took a second for her to jolt awake. The candlestick beyond her bed curtain abruptly lit up. Through the dim candlelight on the other side of the thin curtain, Feng Zhu was able to discern a person's figure. It was Lord Zai's who was taking up the other half of her bed. Coldness surrounded him. Sensing light, his eyes slowly opened. After a brief moment of stupor, he looked to Feng Zhu and asked, What are you doing here? Feng Zhu looked back at him for a while and said, I should be the one asking you this. A puzzlement appeared in Zai's eyes. She yawned and added, Since this is my bed. Tonight, Zai seemed to be slow in reacting to everything. You've returned since earlier, haven't you? No wonder I couldn't find you anywhere for a whole afternoon. Do you stay in the eastern or the western wing? You're in my room right now because you sleepwalked and went to the wrong room, right? Zai's was silent for a long time. I went out for a walk and didn't really pay attention to the time. I've just returned and accidentally entered the wrong room. Outside, rain and wind continued whistling. She slightly groped on her bed for a length of time before pulling out a shell. The room was immediately covered in a soft light. At this time, Feng Zhu finally saw that Zai's was soaked in water. The spot where he lay was also sodden with the wetness from his body. Feng Zhu was quite stunned. It turned out Cha Cha was a prophet. She reached for Zai's frozen fingers. Holding them felt as though she was holding a lump of snow. Feng Zhu gritted her teeth, if it's raining so hard, don't you know how to find shelter or create a force field to keep dry from the rain? Zai's closed his eyes sleepily. I was too busy thinking to notice the rain. Feng Zhu tried to climb over him. Zai's grabbed her hand. There's no need to hurry outside to avoid rumors. He sounded tired. What could I possibly do to you in such state? Feng Zhu struggled away from his grasp. I won't do anything to you. My head's a little dizzy. Keep me company just for a while. The veins on Feng Zhu's forehead were popping blue. 
To hell with rumors and company. You've been in the rain for hours, how can your head not be dizzy? I'm going to prepare a bath for you. If you can move then take off your clothes and give them to me. Cover yourself with the quilt. If you can't move, then don't. I can't move, he said. On the other side of the wall screen, Feng Zhu replied while rolling up her sleeves and preparing the bath. Then you can take a bath with your clothes on. Zai's thought for a while then said, Actually, I think I can move now. This was where magic came in handy. Even though the servants had been to bed now that it was in the middle of the night, she could still make her own hot bath. Feng Zhu dipped her hand into the tub to test the water. She placed a wall screen around the tub and brought a small stool over to sit with her face to the door, then told Zai's the bath was ready. After a series of crashing and splashing, Feng Zhu wondered if Zai's had banged himself on the furniture, but as he was naked at this point, she restrained her worried impulse. Only until there was the sound of water. From behind the wall screen did she bring a stool over to sit near the screen in case Zai's needed something from her. Feng Zhu was pinching her thighs when she heard Zai's speak from behind the screen, I was thinking about the letter you sent me when I was talking the stroll. What letter? The sound of water stopped. You said you wanted to use my name to save Chen Ye on Lingshuo Terrace because you were quite moved by his honorable feelings for Junyo. Feng Zhu at last recalled she had sent Zai's a letter along with the toffee foxes in which she related to him Chen Ye's matter. She probably had written a few scholarly lines, but she couldn't really remember exactly what she had written so she couldn't really understand why Zai suddenly mentioned it. She just vaguely answered him, Ah yes, there is such a thing. I believed it at first because I didn't think you would lie to me. Feng Zhu's heart leapt to her throat. Did he mean he had figured out she wasn't Arania and that she was play-acting with M.O. Xiao? A drop of cold sweat rolled down her forehead. Zeiss continued, so it turned out you rescued him because you like him. His deep voice was trapped in the fog, it did not sound quite real. Feng Zhu was relieved. So this was what he was thinking. I didn't lie to you. You've thought too much, she told him. But because her heart suddenly relaxed, her voice was light, and to Zeiss, it sounded as though the mere mention of Chen Yi's name could render her happy. There was another unspeakable silence. Zai's unhurriedly said, When did you start to like him? Before she could reply, he spoke again, Was it because he had rescued you from the Jukwa cage, but I hadn't? Since you want someone who would come to you in times of danger, you feel it should be him. Feng Zhu was a bit confused. Zai's had been insisting they were good buddies. Were these the things good buddies should be saying? Moreover, she only remembered mentioning the type of person she liked to M.O. Xiao. How come everyone seemed to know what type of person she preferred now? With the bravado of a dead duck, she cleared her throat, wanting to lure Zai's to be clearer. You're my good friend, when I'm in trouble, you don't need to be the first one there. You see, you are different from Chen yet. She waited for Zai's reply, but behind the wall divider was a long silence. After waiting for a length of time, she felt that the silence wasn't very normal. There wasn't even the sound of water. Feng Ju panicked. He was feeling dizzy, did he faint in the water? Unable to ignore Zai's this time, she strode three steps and crossed the screen. 
because she had just added into the tub herbs such as dried ginger and speranskia to help fend off the cold, the water was somewhat murky. Zai's was not on the surface. Feng Ju called to him. There was no reply. She shivered and stepped to the tub. She reached into the water without even rolling up her sleeves. When she found something rigid, she fished it out from the water. Zai surfaced. His half-naked body now above the water surface, one of his hand was grabbed by her, the other was holding aside his long wet hair. He knitted his brow at her. In the night pearl's soft glow, water droplets continuously rolled down from his bare skin. Feng Ju brought her gaze from his collarbone to his neck, then to his face. Suppressing her blushing face, she tried to appear composed as she asked him, Don't scare me like that. What were you doing down there? Thinking. You're too noisy. The hand she used to hold him stiffened. She had just decided that he had feelings for her. But now his words made her unsure. Perhaps she was the only one in a one-sided love. Although Zai's behaviors had always been strange, did he really not have any feelings for her? Because her love. Advisor, Warrior Xiao Yan, wasn't here to give her a timely solution, she spaced out for a moment, then let go of his hand in embarrassment and said, Okay, then continue with your thinking. Put your clothes on once you're done bathing and go back to the eastern wing. I'm going there to prepare your room first. She turned to go, but her exposed arm was held back by Zai's. A suppressed husky voice came to her from behind, How is Chen Ye better than me? Feng Ju was dumbfounded in place. If he had not suspected her, she would have thought he was being jealous but at this time, she was a little confused. Or was he asking the question literally? She thought for a moment, then honestly answered, I've never thought about this before. She never had improper thoughts about Chen yet, so she naturally wouldn't compare him with Zai's. However, in Zai's ears, this remark had sounded as though she was clearly in love with Chen Ye and disdained the comparing of Chen Ye to others. The room was momentarily very quiet. Between their breathing, one could hear the wind outside the window. Feng Ju's throat was feeling astringent for some reason. She struggled away from his hold. A strength suddenly came to her arm. Having not stood firmly, she abruptly fell into the bathtub, splashing sprays of water everywhere. The scent of fragrant herbs lingered around her nose. Warm water soaked her undergarment, the gossamer fabric at her arm was soaked through, plastering onto her snow-white skin. Feng Ju moved a little and was alarmed to find her sitting on Zai's lap, his face in close proximity. Such a handsome man! with long soaked hair and a glistening face. Normally his clothes were so reserved that even his neck wasn't shown. At this moment, however, his entire upper body was bare above the water. His dark pupils, a brewing storm. And his face was very calm. Feng Ju blushed like a tomato. She sat on his lap and did not dare to move. She really couldn't keep up with this show, she didn't know what to sing next. Zai's free hand touched her face as he whispered, Can Chen Ye say pretty words to make you happy? Can he say you're beautiful, nice, and talented? He paused and stared into her eyes. I hadn't said nor could I say the nice things you wanted to hear, but can't you see how I feel about you? Feng Ju stammered a yes. Half a second later, cried a yes, again. 
Her knotted mind didn't fully process his words when she stammered her first yes. After half a moment of thought and when she had ruled out all possibilities and finally understood what he was saying, her second yes, was a startled yes. Sure enough, he had those meanings after going roundabout in circles. Feng Ju suppressed her the blooming flowers in her heart and armed her face with composure. I never thought I'd be too late, Zai said a while later, I never thought you wouldn't want me. He said these things too naturally, as though Feng Ju had given him all the grievances in the world. So you got jealous and stayed in the rain. Zai's looked to the ceiling. I was thinking of what to do, but I couldn't think of anything. Getting rid of him might be a way but it'll make you sad. Feng Ju said in gladness, thank heavens you were still thinking of whether I'd be sad or not and did not rashly kill Chen yet. Even though you hurt me, I am still a man, how can I hurt you? You can actually say nice words for a change. Those were nice words. Zai's tiredly said. While they were talking, the water in the tub had turned cold. Seeing that Zai's emotions seemed to have eased, Feng Ju climbed out of the tub. Zai looked somewhat tired as he leaned into the tub, no longer stopping her. He did not say anything either. Feng Ju looked down to Zai's from outside the tub. Their height difference suddenly emboldened her. Zai's did not seem to be just a little jealous. She also felt sorry for him, but who told him to be so stubborn? Using magic to make the water warm again, she leaned over secretively and whispered into Zai's ear, I can't believe you are being so jealous. Have I ever said I like Chen yet? Zai's eyes flew open. She placed her hand on his head as though she was pacifying a child. That thing in the afternoon was just a misunderstanding. I like you, so how can I not want you? She placed a kiss on his cheek, a sweetness rising in her heart. Before Zai's could react, she sneezed and discovered that her wet clothes had started to seep coldness into her skin. She hurried behind the screen to change out of them to dry. Feng Ju particularly admired herself tonight. She had won Zai so effortlessly. As expected, her techniques were great after a thousand years of training. There was still one thing that gave her some headaches. Her being Arania was only pretense, so of course she could not stay here her whole life. However, Zai's was from this world. How would she take him out? Would he be willing to leave with her? After thinking for a while, she felt that it wasn't very urgent and did not bother to think about it further. She hummed a little song while she changed the beddings that were made sodden by Zai's. Now that they had reached an understanding, there was no need to move to the eastern chamber in the middle of the night when one of them was still dizzy. The two of them could just rest here. It would be fine if she were to place a small divan next to the bed as usual. She reckoned Zai's would need to wash himself again. She retrieved the night pearl and only brought a candlestick to the screen for Zai's. Because it was the dead of night, she thought she might be a little embarrassed when Zai stepped out. Not knowing what to say, she climbed first onto the small divan and intended to feign sleep. Feigning sleep was her specialty. She heard soft footsteps coming closer. In the blink of an eye, the candle light was off, and the small divan became narrower. After returning from his bath, Zai still tried to steal bed space from her. She had been lying sideways. Presently, she just felt her bed getting hot and humid. Dense vapor seemed to have been brought to the divan, 
intermixed with some herbs and white sandalwood scents. It somehow gave off a lingering aroma. Feng Ju nodded her quilt. Should she continue to feign sleep or mention to Zai's that she had dried the large bed's bedding and for him to sleep there? Fortunately, there was no major movement from Zai's. He only pulled a corner of the quilt to cover himself, then whispered to her, If you don't have any feelings for Chen yet, then why did you say those things to him in the afternoon? Feng Ju sighed inwardly, You ask so directly, but sorry, I'm already asleep. Zai's placed his hand on her shoulder, and said to her in an extremely soft voice, Want to know what will happen if you feign sleep? That was just me and Chen Ye singing a play to provoke you. I didn't expect you to be provoked by this. While it was true that it was nothing but poppycock, it wasn't yet the opportunity to tell him the truth. Besides, Zai's appeared to believe this poppycock of hers. Zai's jealousy made her feel tender, but it was funny all the same. She teased him, even this provoked you into such jealousy, next time if someone said a few words to me, would you be jealous too? Patience is a good virtue, you have to learn it a bit. A hand reached across the quilt to touch her cheek. Zai's softly sighed, it might be too late if I didn't get jealous now. Feng Ju was muted for a second. Heat surfaced her face. It was a most delicate silence. She pretended to unconsciously turn her back to Zai's and said, How can it be too late? I'll tell you an old story, you'll see that you'll need to learn from me. She cleared her throat and adopted a storyteller's voice, Before you, I've once liked someone. I've told you before when we went to view you Elling flowers. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. To be by his side, I had disguised as a pet. At first, he was very good to me. But when he had a fiancé, things were somewhat different. His fiancé picked on me, his fiancé's pet also picked on me. And he had taken their side. But even when things came to that point, I was so in love with him that I didn't think I was too late. When she finished telling him the past, she was ruefully quiet for a while, then coughed and scolded Zai's who was lying next to her, although it was unfortunate, it helped me learn many things. I went to look for you the moment you got jealous. I prepared a bath for you the moment you got drenched in the rain. How can you say it's too late, I? The rest of her words were swallowed back down her throat. Zeiss hugged her from behind and whispered to her, he was a bastard. She gasped in surprise and didn't know what say. She didn't know why his actions were so strangely gentle tonight. He held her in his embrace as if she was a treasure he could never lose. Outside, the squall was swirling. His embrace was exceptionally long. It wasn't that she hadn't thought of what might happen tonight. Although she liked Zai's with all her heart, she was a bit afraid of this consummation thing. They only heard each other's breathing in the room. At long last, she felt a hand softly brushing aside her long hair. She had been using a thick quilt lately and wore less at night. She was originally only wearing a thin nightgown. Taken into account that Zai's was in the room, she just randomly put on a thin purple robe outside her dressing gown. At this time, her dress and robe were sliding down her shoulders with the movement of Zai's hand. The bared skin felt a bit cold and made her shiver. He planted a kiss on her bare shoulder, straying down along her neckline. She could feel him close to her, bringing with him a white sandalwood breath. Although the room was pitch black, 
his hands were deliberately sliding toward her. He untied her robe, slipped into her undergarment, then with the unique warmth after a bath, stroked her sensitive skin. His fingertips were soothing and elegant. It felt as though he was writing a word, painting a picture, or playing a song. Feng Ju felt she was simmering on a small fire. The more she withstood the heat, the more her blood was boiling away inch by inch. She could not bear it any longer and started to breath raggedly. When she reached out to stop his wandering fingers, she found that her grip on his arm had no trace of strength. His behavior tonight was beyond what she could expect. She wanted to raise her voice to refuse, but as she hazily called his name, her lips were sealed shut. At this time, not only was her blood boiling badly, even her brain had been boiled into a pot of paste. She remembered a few kisses between them, but none of them was like this. One of her hands pressed against his bare chest, the other clung onto his shoulder. She was kissed until she felt faint, yet at the same time, she distractedly thought to herself that his robe was rather loose tonight. His hard chest was warm, but not smooth, as if there was some scarring. Her unconscious caresses prompted his gentle stroking at the small of her back to increase its strength. His kiss deepened. In between her ragged breathing, a trace of pleasure was climbing in her mind. She confusedly wondered why she had wanted to push him away before. She couldn't come up with an answer. Over and over again, she only knew to respond to his kiss. Her scorching blood drove her need in finding an outlet. By the time her clothes were gone, her bare skin against his, their nakedness's softness and warmth finally gave her some relief. In the past, she had heard that this sort of thing was a little frightening, but she didn't think that it was so scary now. The silver-haired man's kiss was obviously a matter of great pleasure. She didn't know what was going to happen next. She only felt no matter what it was, it was all a matter of course. But even so, when he entered her, she was still shocked. His breathing along with his voice lingered by her ears. A delicate pain was born from her body. With absolute restraint, his fingers ignited fire on her sensitive body, his kiss deepened with each movement. His caresses and kisses seemed to soothe her pain away. He placed his glowing forehead against hers and asked, Does it hurt? His deep voice was like a gust before the storm, sending her a flutter. She nodded aggrievedly yet still unconsciously placed her hands on his shoulders as she tightly hugged him. She leaned into his ears and cried, a little. You were caught in the rain, don't you have a headache? His hand held her waist. I don't care, he said huskily. After a night of heavy rain, the next day was bright and sunny. Feng Ju was wrapped up in the quilt as she leaned against a windscreen on one side of the bed. The young man sleeping sideways on the bed had his hair scattered on the pillow, a silk cover draped over his waist. A cold soft sheen was reflected from his silver hair by the subtle sunlight, rendering an exceptionally handsome sleeping face. Feng Ju blushed. Ahem, she had consummated with Zai's last night. It wasn't as terrible as she was told. It was true that it was painful at first, but it was nothing compared to injuries and wounds from brawls and fights. And it didn't hurt any more later either. She hazily recalled having cried a bit, but it hadn't come from the pain. She was a broad-minded citizen of King Kaiu, it was nothing worth mentioning. Before, trying to become innocent because of Donghua Daijun was the more perplexing thing to her clansmen. 
In her opinion, consummation with Zai's was a good thing. If she liked Zai's, and Zai's also liked her, then there was nothing wrong with it. It was a little sudden, but that was all right too. She had been worried whether Zai's would leave this place with her when the truth came out. Now that he had thoroughly taken advantage of her, he wasn't going to be able to get away with it. At this thought, she was very encouraged. This person was hers. She leaned over in high spirits and made some sounds with the silk ribbons. Zai's remained still. It seemed he was in deep sleep. She rearranged the quilt on him and fixed his silver hair a bit. He unexpectedly mumbled, Why aren't you sleeping? She blushed and lowered her voice, Because according to traditions, we should get up early the day after our consummation to eat purple yam cakes. His eyes were still closed, but his lips gave hint of a smile. His voice carried a sleepiness, Do you want everyone to know we've just consummated yesterday? Let's not pay too much attention to formalities. He groped for her hand and held onto it tightly. Sleep with me a while more. She lay back down, her fingers lacing with his. In the wonderful morning light, she happily closed her eyes and went back to sleep with him. End of chapter 13